Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, just a quick tip video. I'm going to share with you something one of my students shared with me. He's got a real quick way to tell whether or not you're in developer mode. In other words, are you the developer working with the ACCDB file or is this one of your users and they're using an ACCDE file, which is what all your users should have, right? All right, let's talk about this. So recently in one of my videos, the force shutdown video, I show you how to force the database to close down. So you can say, you know, at 5 a.m. every day in case someone left the office without logging off, we're going to kick them out, right? But you might not want to kick yourself out. You might want to have it so that the developer, right, using, you know, the, the admin guy, you, uh, you don't get booted out. And I've got several techniques for setting up user logons and security and all that stuff. But... One of my students, Thomas, came up with an ingenious method to tell whether or not you're working with the ACCDB file or not. In other words, if you're one of your users, they have an ACCDE file, right? And uh, he sets attempt bars like this. I'm going to show you how to build a simple function to do this, but it's basically the same technique. So shout out to Thomas for the idea. All right, before we get into it, though, this is a developer level video. What does that mean? Well, if you've never programmed in VBA before, go watch this video first. There's a little QR code you can scan right there. This teaches you everything you need to know to get started in about 20 minutes. Also, go watch this video on creating your own function. Go watch this video on the if-then function. And go watch this video on what an ACCDE file is if you've never split your database before. Oh, wait, I got a video for that too. Here's my split your database. Of course, you should always split your database in a multi-user setup. Don't have multiple people working on the same front end. Every user gets their own copy of the back end file, which is just a copy of your ACCDE file. Okay, so go watch those. Those are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Then come on back. All right, so here I have the master database, my ACCDB files, the one that I work on to make changes, right? And this is just a copy of my Tech Help free template. This is a free database you can grab off my website if you want to. Let's make a function to indicate whether or not I am working with an ACCDB file. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to check the file name, right? This guy's got a file name. It's going to be a full path, you know, C backslash whatever, backslash my desktop, backslash db.accdb. And we can get that from the current project group of properties. So let's go down here to global module. If you don't have a global module set up already, just go to create and then module, not class module, regular module. That'll open up the VB editor. There it is. Let me slide this up like that. Okay, there we go. All right, let's come right down here and we're going to create a public function. Remember, a sub just does stuff. A function returns a value, right? And public means everybody in the database can use it. All right, I'm going to call it is dev, just is dev, nice and short, is developer, whatever you want to call it. OK, it's not going to take any information in, so no incoming parameters, and it's going to return a Boolean value as bool, right? Boolean is a true false value, otherwise known as a yes, no field <laughs> in access. Now, all we're going to do is we're going to check the right five characters of the full path and file name. And if that comes out with ACCDB, then we know we've got the developer copy. So if the right of current project dot full name comma five, I need five characters, right? Yeah, you, you could just do one, but you could just look for a B or an E, but uh, do, do all five. <laughs> if that equals A, C, C, D, B, then is dev equals true. Otherwise, is dev equals false. Real straightforward, right? It's either, it's either that or it's not. All right, let's save that. Give it a debug compile. Looks good. Now, let's test it. So I'm just going to put some code in my hello world button, right? Design view, right click, build event. And we can come in here and say, if is dev, then we don't need to put equals true, right? By default, equals true is what we're looking for. Then we're going to status uh, is developer. Otherwise, we'll status is not developer. And if. All right, and status is my little status function that's way up top here. I covered this in the tech help free template video. It just basically writes to that big gray box on the main menu. Okay, save it again, debug compile. Let's go back out here, let's close it, open it back up again, click the button, bink, and now I am 
in developer mode, right? That way the database knows it's the developer time. Now let's make, let's, let's, let's create the ACCDE file. If we were to actually split the database, right? Where you put your tables in one thing and your, your forms and stuff in another, you would split it and you'd give the front end ACCDE file to your users. Okay, it's all explained in those other videos. But for now, we'll just make an ACCDE out of the whole thing. All right, so file, save as, ACCDE, right there, save as. All right, what are you going to call it? ACCDE is fine. And then hit save. And it'll do some stuff. And then you'll end up with this little guy. It's an ACCDE file. Right? It's the execute only or encrypted. I've seen different definitions for it. But now if you come in here and click the button, not in developer mode because this is the ACCDE file. It's literally just looking at the file name. Now, why would you need this? Well, if you don't have full user security in your database with user logons, or you don't want to go through the trouble of checking the PC name, which I also talk about in my other video, um, you, you know, you can look at the name of the computer, the name of the logged on user. There's all kinds of things you can do. But if you don't want to do any of that and you just care about whether or not it's you or one of your end users, right, then this technique is nice and short and simple. But I would only use this for maybe displaying some like extra diagnostic information or if you want to have a developer menu that's got buttons on it for like, you know, routine maintenance type stuff like backups, compact and repair. Uh, extra diagnostic logging, that kind of stuff. Don't put anything secure in here because this is not a secure method. This is just a quick method to maybe hide some stuff that you don't want your end user seeing, but it's not a big deal if they do see it because this is how easy this is to, to break. You could just come in here and rename this front end file. If I call it, let's say db2.accdb, right? Hit enter, you get the, you're gonna change the file extension. Yeah, that's okay. And so now I've got db2.accdb. And if I open this one up and I hit hello world, it is developer now. Even though it's still an accde file. In other words, if I come in here, I still can't go into design view, right? I, it, it's still, the file's still locked down. Still can't open up the, the VBA and stuff like that. But your end user, if they know enough, can still rename the file. So don't rely on this technique for anything sensitive, right? If you do want more in-depth security, I got a couple free videos. I cover user level security, actually setting up usernames and passwords. It's not that hard to do, but it's, it takes a little bit of work. I also have another video here that walks you through some simple security measures to protect your database from 90% of users out there. You know, if, unless they're a hacker, unless they know access well. If it's just your typical office user, this stuff is good enough. And once you got that stuff set up, you can track their user logon. You can track what they're doing inside your database. See this technique here, I just use the computer name and the person's username on Windows. So you don't even have to set up a, a logon password if you want. You can just have them so it just recognizes their computer. Now, by its very nature, Access itself is not designed to be a secure database, okay? If you really, really need security, you want to take your, your backend data, your tables and stuff, you want to put those in a database server like SQL Server, okay? But I have my security seminar, which teaches you how you can make your access database as secure as possible, okay? And we can take your front end, we can lock it down, we can prevent your users from getting into stuff that you don't want them to see. And we create a system log, all that kind of stuff. So check this out if you really wanna make a secure solution. And again, if you move your data to SQL Server, then you've got a really good bulletproof tight database setup. My SQL server online seminar shows you how you can set it up so that you can share it with people around the world too. So anybody anywhere with a copy of your access front end can log into your database and you can get information to a web page or any kind of other stuff that you want. And of course, if you like learning with me, if you enjoy my wacky sense of humor and like my videos, check out my developer courses. I got lots of them. Lots of stuff to keep you busy learning Microsoft Access. So there you go. There is your tech help video for today. Again, shout out to Thomas. Thanks for the idea for the video. I hope the rest of you learn something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted.
Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward, <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, $1. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members, Get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. 
In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.